So we've collected sap. We've been collecting sap every day and we have collect maybe a gallon from a good day from a spile on a tree. So if we have three or four taps on a tree, we might collect three or four gallons a day. We're getting part way through the season or toward the end of the season and maybe we've accumulated 40 gallons of sap, which means we can make a gallon of syrup. And so that's what we'll do. Every day we'll collect the sap, we'll store it in a cool place, maybe in a snowbank on the north side of the house, or maybe if you have extra space in your refrigerator, but you want to store it around four degrees. You don't want it to really get over 10 degrees because there are bacteria which will eat that sugar and create some slime in the sap and that can give off flavor to the syrup. If there's a little bit of bacteria, a little bit of slime in there, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll just, you just boil it. But if there gets to be a lot, it will reduce the sugar content and also introduce off flavors. So you do want to keep your sap cool until you boil it down. So then we have maybe 50 gallons of sap accumulated or some amount. It's time to have a fire. So we will light a fire outside and get a big pot like this and put, you know, maybe 10 liters, 20 liters, 15 liters of sap into the pot and get a good rolling boil. And that will boil for a long time. And as the water boils off and the sugar begins to condense, we just keep adding more sap and more sap and more sap. And this process will probably take all day. So it's you have to find a nice day when you're not going to, you're going to sit around, watch the fire, maybe prune some trees, do something but you can't really leave it for very long. You have to stay around the fire and, and constantly monitor it every 15 minutes or so. You have to see where your sap is boiling, keeping it boiling all day long. And then we'll want to boil it until the concentration of that sap gets from 2.5% sugar to 66% sugar. 66% sugar is kind of a magic number because it's a level that <coughs> fungus and bacteria <coughs> is unlikely to grow in the, in the syrup. <coughs> if you only boil it down to 35 or 40%, bacteria will invade. But to get the sugar level high enough, and it's pretty stable. But it's a, it takes a lot of boiling to get to 66%. And then how do you know when you get to the, the critical, to the right concentration where your syrup is done? Maple syrup is, is pretty runny when it's done, so you can't really go too much by the texture. Uh, when you buy table syrup, a lot of times it's thick, and, and but maple syrup's not that thick. I mean, it's just a little bit thicker than sap. And. Uh, and so you need to know when you're getting close to that range. There are a couple of ways to do it. One is with, the, uh, you could buy a refractometer. This is a device which measures sugar content based on light. And uh, it, it's a useful way to measure sugar. But you don't need technology like this in order to do it. Uh, most people use temperature. thermometer. There's various kinds of thermometers that you can use in order to monitor the, the temperature. But when the water, is, when the sap is boiling at the beginning, it's right around 100 degrees Celsius. What you want is for the, to boil until the temperature of boiling is 4 degrees Celsius higher. That means the sugar concentration is 66%. So you monitor the temperature of the, of the boiling sap until the temperature begins to rise. So it will stay at 100 and, or 101 for like hours and hours and hours. 
And then when you get between 101, 102, 103, 104, it's like all of a sudden. As the concentration, as it concentrates, the temperature is rising very, very, very slowly. And all of a sudden, when you're almost there, it rises very, very fast. So when you think you're getting close to the concentration you need to be, you need to pay a lot of attention to the boiling point. Up until that time, for six hours of the day, you can sit by the fire, you can have a glass of wine, you can eat a hot dog, you can do whatever by your fire. But at that last critical moment, you really have to pay attention to the boil. There's a couple other ways to know when you're close. And one of those is that all of a sudden it will start to foam up a lot right about that same temperature of boil. And so if you start all of a sudden, you've been boiling all day, you think you're close, all of a sudden you start seeing a lot of bubbles and, and foam, that's a good sign that you're pretty close to where you need to be. The other way that I do it is since I know that the sugar concentration is somewhere around two or two and a half percent, is I calculate what my expected final volume is going to be. So I know that if I have one gallon of sap, it's going to make that volume of syrup. If I know I have 40 gallons of sap, I know it's going to make a gallon. So I will boil without regard until it gets to double or triple the volume I want at the end. And then when I get down to that last bit, then I'll pay a lot of attention. In fact, when I get down to that last 50%, when I'm going from 30% sugar to 60% sugar, I'll probably take it off the fire and I'll go inside and I'll do that final boil on the stove where I can really pay attention to it. I'm only going to be boiling off a little bit of water. And it's much easier to control on the stove than on the fire. But usually if I'm making a bunch of syrup, I don't do it in the kitchen at the beginning because I'm trying, I'm going to boil off 40 gallons of water and then the wallpaper will fall off my walls. That's happened to people I know. <laughs> so so the, I start out outside, and boil off most of the water outside, and then just that last doubling of the concentration I do inside. Mm -hmm.